tide in Hawaii. Chapter 1. A ship? Jack and Annie were sitting on their porch, reading books. Jack was reading about pilgrims. Annie was reading about pilgrims. Suddenly, Annie closed her book. She looked up into the sunset. Hey, Annie said with a smile. Jack looked over at her. It's back, she said, jumping up. Oh, man, breathed Jack. He knew she was talking about the magic tree. Talking about the magic treehouse, Annie could always tell when it was black. Back, and Jack closed his book and stood up. We are going to the woods. He called through the screen door. There's something we have to check on. Be back before dark. Their mom said. We will, said Jack. Jack. He picked up his backpack. Then he and Annie headed across the yard. When they got to the sidewalk, they started running. They ran up the street and into the Frog Creek woods. In the last, last light of the day, they hurried between the trees. Finally, they came to the tallest oak. They held their breath as they looked up. The magic tree was back. Good morning, said Jack. Thanks, said Annie. She st started up the ladder. Jack followed. It was nearly dark inside, but the sun-dried wood smelled like a smart summer day. What kind of special magic wood we will we look for this time, said Jack. They glanced around the treehouse. They saw squirrels. They brought Jack from the Shakespeare's theater. They saw the twig from the mountain gorillas, and the porch from Prout. Prout. Porch from the corn seeds from the first Thanksgiving. There, said Annie. She pointed to a book in the corner. A piece of paper was sticking out of it. Jack picked up the book. Then he pulled out the paper and read, Dear Jack and Annie, good luck on your fourth journey to find a special magic. This secret rhyme will guide you to find a special magic. Build a special kind of ship that rides the waves both high and low. Every kind of trip. Thank you, Morgan. Jack looked at Annie. A ship? He said. She shrugged. Yep, I yep. I guess we have to build a ship. Where do we go to build it? She and Jack looked at the book's cover. It showed palm trees, a beach, and a beautiful ocean. The title was A Visit to Old Hawaii. Oh, wow, said Annie. I love Hawaii. How do you know you love it? Jack asked. We've never been to Hawaii. Well, we're going now, said Annie. She pointed at the cover. We wish we could go there. The wind started to blow. The trio started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 2 Aloha. Jack opened his eyes. A gentle wind brushed against his skin. It smelled sweet and fresh. Annie looked out the window. Nice, she said. Jack looked at two. The treehouse had landed on top of a tall palm tree. The palm tree was at the end of a flowery meadow. One side of the meadow, a cliff dropped down to, to the beach and ocean. On the other side of the meadow were the rooftops of a small village. Beyond the village were great tall gray mountains. Misty clouds hid their peaks. Water flow go gushed down their sides. I told you I loved Hawaii, said Annie. Don't you? I have to learn about it first, said Jack. He pushed his glasses into, into place and opened their research book. He read aloud. Hawaii is a chain of island, islands in the Pacific Ocean. The largest island is Hawaii, which gives its name to the whole group. The islands of of the islands were formed millions of years ago by volcanoes. The volcanoes erupt under the ocean. Over time, their 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 car their craters rose above the water. Wow! said Annie. We were on the top of a volcano. Yeah, said Jack. He read on. The volcanic rock crumbled and turned to soil. Over millions of years, wind and birds dropped seed on the islands. Plants and trees began to grow, and birds and insects made their homes. 
cool, said Jack. He took out his notebook and pencil and wrote, wind and birds brought seeds. He read some more. About two thousand year, years ago, people first came to Hawaii. They came in canoes from other islands in the Pacific. They rowed thousands of miles across the ocean, guarded only by the wind and stars. Hey, listen, said Annie. Jack put down the book and listened. Sounds of music, laughter, music and laughter flowed in the breeze. There must be a party in the village, said Annie. Let's go. What about building the ship? Asked Jack. We'll figure that out later, said Annie. Let's meet some people at the party. Maybe they can help us. She started down the ladder. Jack heard a whoop of laughter in the distance. The party goes sound. The party does sound fun, he thought. He packed up his things and followed Danny down the ground. The sun was low in the sky. They walked through the meadow toward the village. Everything was bathed. In a gold, in a golden red glow. Oh man! Breathed Jack. There was a beauty everywhere. Purple flowers shaped like bells. White flowers that looked like stars. Tall feathery ferns. Green spiky, spiky, spiky plants. Big orange and black butterflies. And tiny yellow birds. When they got close to the village, they saw an open area filled with people. Jack and Annie slid behind the palm tree. They peeked out, out at the party. There were about fifty people, including grown-ups, teenagers, and little kids. They were all barefoot and and wore wreaths of flowers in their in their necks. A woman was chanting. Her verb. Her words rose and fell like waves. She chanted about a volcano goddess named Pele. While she chanted, other people played mu music. Some blew on pipes that that looked like flutes. Others shook rattles that sounded like baby rattles. Some hit sticks together to make clicking sounds. Most of the villagers were dancing to the music. They stepped from side to side. They swayed their hips and waved their hands. They're doing the hula, whispered Danny. She smiled and waved her hands. Two, don't get carried away, whispered Jack. He took out their book and found a picture of Hawaiians dancing. He read, the early Hawaiians had no written language. They told stories with hula dancing. The hula is a blend of dancing and a chanting poetry. Jack pulled out his notebook. He started a list about early Hawaii. No written language stories with hula. Suddenly, Jack heard a loud laughter and clapping. He looked up, and it was gone. He peeked out from behind a tree. Annie was doing the hula with the dancers, but no one seemed surprised. Everyone just smiled at her and kept dancing. A girl thought sight. A girl caught sight of Jack. She looked about Annie's age. She had long, tiny black hair and a big, friendly smile. Come to the hula, she called to him. No way, Jack breathed. He slipped behind the tree again, but the girl. Danced over to him and took his hand. Join us, she said. No thanks, said Jack. The girl didn't let go. She pulled Jack into the open. The music got louder. The dancers and musicians nodded and smiled at Jack. Jack stood still. He didn't know how to fool it. Any kind of dance, how to do any kind of dance, let alone, let alone the kula. He started the, at the ground, clutching his backpack and notebook until the music da and dancing ended. The Hawaiians gathered around Jack and Annie. They all had friendly, open faces. "Who are you?" A, the young girl asked. "I'm Annie," said Annie. "This is my brother Jack." "I'm Kama," the girl said. "This is my brother." Brother, Boca. She pointed to a boy in the crowd who looked about Jack's age. The boy stepped forward. 
he grinned a big grin, just like his sisters. He pulled off his wreath of red, fluffy flowers. He put it around Annie's neck. A lay to welcome you, Booker said. Come on, then pulled off her lay and put it around Jack's neck. Aloha, Jack and Annie, everyone said.